Okay, so today's lesson is lesson seven, and it covers the use of, of uh, color in Illustrator. And as far as I know, Illust Adobe Illustrator has probably one of the most robust um, systems for editing and applying um, color to your illustrations than any other program that I know. It can be a very simple process or it can be a very complex one and we go from one extreme to the other in this lesson. Um, what you're looking at at the moment is one of the finished lessons. It's um, taking these little guitar shapes and applying color to them in various ways. Um, the same with the guitar to the right and the cassette and the sunglasses. Um, they're just a whole bunch of different ways of doing it and that's what we're going to cover. Um, before we kind of get into deep into the lesson though, I want to cover and explain to the best of my ability um, color modes. So for example, if I were to select file new, I'm not going to create a new file, but you'll notice over here where, the, where my mouse is or my cursor, it says color mode. By default, Illustrator uses CMYK color. That stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Those are the four colors that are used in printing full color pages when you use offset lithography. So if you, for those of you who have a printed textbook, um, if you were to look at all the color illustrations in there, they are printed using CMYK. Okay, they're really, there are only four colors that they use to print a full color illustration. And it's, for those of you who've had a little bit of, of art history, um, it would be like a, a Seurat painting. It's, it's pointillism. It's, um, if I wanted to print green, I would have to put a blue dot next to a yellow dot. And depending on the size of the dot would determine the kind of green that I saw. And that's a pure green. If I wanted it slightly darker or muted, then I would also incorporate um, a, a black dot. And it's all done automatically, the way that the halftone is created. But that's how the system that you have to work in if you're planning on printing your, your piece with offset lithography. On the other hand, if you plan on working solely on the web, then you would want to use RGB, red, green, blue. Those are the primary colors that you use when you're printing, or not printing, but when you're working with light. And that's what you see on the screen is RGB color. You can always convert RGB to CMYK and vice versa. Um, the colors that are available in RGB are far exceed what's available in CMYK. That's why oftentimes when people see their pieces printed, they're a little bit um, disappointed because they aren't as bright or brilliant or don't quite match the colors that they see on the screen. So it, it's important to note that these are the two, basically the two different color modes. Um, that we're working with. And there's also spot colors that we'll get to today that are um, unique um, and are used entirely in, in printing. Um, so we'll get to that. So this is the finished piece. Okay. And we're going to work various ways of, of editing and, and adding colors to our color palette. So here's our start file. And quite simply, um, before we even get started, um, editing and changing colors, I want you to see that there are various places that you can look at um, in here to edit color. There's a bunch of them. I mean, right off the bat, if you look in the lower left-hand corner, we have a fill color and we have a stroke color here. If you look in the upper left-hand corner in the options menu, we have the fill color and the stroke color. If you look over to the right in our um, properties panel, we have the fill and this stroke color here. They all do the same thing. It just, um, there's just a lot of redundancy that's built in. If I pick the, um, the swatches panel, same thing, I can edit color from here. There's a fill color, there's a stroke color from there. Okay. 
So they're right there. Those are four waves, and I know that there are, in fact, five. Um, oh, if I select, here we go, our little color spectrum color here. I can click from here to select the color. And you'll notice since we are working in CMYK, I can use my color callouts, which is what we're going to use quite extensively in this lesson here. You know, what percentage is cyan, what percentage is magenta, what percentage is yellow, what percentage is black. Okay, so right off the bat, you know, there's five different ways of editing color and there are more. So to um, change the color, um, all we have to do is we have to select the object that we want. That we want. So let me um, make sure that I can see what I'm doing here. And I'll make sure that nothing is, is locked. That's kind of important. Okay. And I didn't think it was just the same. Let's go ahead and select. There we go. So I've selected the red guitar on top. And anytime you select a shape, you can see that it automatically makes visible its um, color attributes. And we have, you know, a, a red fill right now, and we have a white stroke. If I want to change the color, um, I quite simply, one of the ways of doing that is simply just bringing up my swatch panel. And I'm going to select orange from that. Boom, and that changes it to orange. Ta-da! Quite simple. Okay, but now we're going to get a little bit more complicated. We're going to start creating, um, that's applying existing color. We're going to begin to um, create custom colors. So what I want to do now is I'm going to select the gray guitar right here, and we're going to create our own custom color here. And it's currently gray, but what I can do is I can one of the ways that I can do that is I can bring up the, as I said, that color panel here. And I can begin to either use the, the color spectrum at the bottom. So let's say, for example, I want to pick uh, an orange. So if, if I pick here, notice it, it's very difficult to pick exact, the exact color that you're going for. And this is pretty close. It's a yellow that we're going to be going for. So the color that they want us to use for this yellow right now, um, I got to look in the book so I can see one. They want um, cyan to be three. So I'm going to go ahead and, and type in, just it's easy to type in the percentages, 3%. And we want um, magenta be, to be 2%. So these are really low percentages for those. And for the yellow, we want it to be 98%. And you can see it, with, the, with the object selected, it, as I make the, the changes in my, <coughs> um, my uh, CMYK callouts, it automatically updates and changes. Okay. So all you have to do is deselect and you're done. But the difference is, is that I have not saved that color yet. And if I want to add it to my color palette, that will be the next thing, saving color. So the next thing that maybe I want to do is let's go ahead and let's select this shape here for the, the hollow area of our guitar. And again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up <coughs> um, the color bar here. Actually, no, they still want us to use the other one. That's okay. It doesn't really matter. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, this one is going to become a dark orange. So with it selected, I'll go ahead and I'll add, edit the colors here. We want 84% magenta. So 0% cyan, 84% magenta. And we want 100% um, yellow. So that's already there. Hmm, interesting. Um, oh, we don't want any black though. So I'm going to remove all the black. And here's our, um, our dark orange. Okay, so I can close that. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up the, um, the swatches panel. And to add that color to our swatches now, 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this little plus sign right here, this little plus indicator for a new swatch. And when I do, it brings up uh, a dialog box here, a little panel. And the default name that they use, which I really kind of like, um, gives you the color callouts. So if you ever want to match the color, you know exactly just by that name. But instead, they're going to have us name it dark orange. Okay, and you can see it's 84% um, magenta, 100% cyan. And I want to make sure that this is added to our library. So I'm going to go ahead and click there. Now I don't need to create a new library, it's just going to add it to this one. Another thing that you should take note of is that we'll be getting to this um, a little in just a few minutes, is that this is a global color. And by default, global colors are selected. There's a, a distinct um, difference between global colors and um, those that are not. So I'll go ahead and I'll click OK. And you'll notice it was just added to my swatch panel. And because it is a global color, you'll notice that it has a little tick mark in the lower right hand corner. Okay, that's really very important. Okay, um, let me see here. I might have. No, okay. I don't know if I have, if somebody has a question or not. Okay. So I've now created a new color. I've named it and I've added it to my library. And you can see that I have one here. As you roll over it, there's the orange. There's a dark orange, and we're going to begin creating other colors in a variety of different ways. Um, the next one that they want to do is that we're going to work with the blue one here. And um, instead of using that, we're going to base it on an existing color. And we're going to base it on the existing dark orange. So if I select dark orange, Um, but before I do, maybe I can go ahead and I can make a copy of this. So by selecting that, there's two ways that you can make a new color. I can click on this little flyout panel here, and I can say duplicate swatch, and that will allow me to duplicate it. Another way that I kind of like, rather than clicking there, is just to click on the swatch and drag it on a new swatch, and it makes a duplicate of it. So now I can select this one. I can um, go up to my one here, and I want it to be, let me see here. I don't want the color guide. I want, I don't want that. Hold on here. Um, I think I do, I want in the dark color, yeah. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna change, um, we are gonna change a variety of colors here. So let me bring up my color panel again. And I'm just going to double click on it. That'll be the easiest way to do it, to make the changes. So um, by doing that, I want to make sure that the cyan now is 11. And it is important for this assignment to be um, particular about the colors, because this is, um, it's all about color. So I want to make sure that the color swatches are identical so it matches the the lesson that we're doing. So this is going to be 23. And let me pre click preview so I can see what's going on here. And I want um, that's for magenta and yellow is 100% and zero white. So here's our new color, which is sort of a mustardy color. And I'm going to click OK. And let's go ahead and select the blue. I guess I could have done that ahead of time. Let's just go ahead and select that mustard color. Okay. And actually, I should name it mustard. So I'll go ahead and I'll double click on it. And instead of dark orange two, we'll just name it mustard. There. So now a couple of different ways of adding color. Um, I base the mustard color on the existing dark orange. Um, by default, both of them are global colors. Okay. 
So um, editing global colors. And this is what can be kind of, um, if you're not careful, I mean, it can be, it's a really useful, but if you're not careful, it can sort of ruin an illustration for you too. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select this guitar part and I'm gonna select this guitar part too. And I'm gonna make it the dark orange. Okay, so they're also dark orange. But now even without selecting any of these shapes, if I go ahead and I double click on this color and I choose to edit it. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change the magenta to from 84 to 64. And let's select preview and notice how these are changing. So what happens with global colors is that even without the shapes being selected, that if you edit that color, it will change all of those colors globally. On the other hand, if you choose, if that's not the way that you want to work, then you make sure you need to make sure that global is unchecked. And then when you edit colors, it will only change them individually. So right now I automatically edited, you know, um, these three colors right away. Okay. Actually these two, because these were the two that I had selected. This one is the same. Yeah. Okay. So those were editing global swatches. Um, very important to understand the difference between global and non-global. So for example, this color right here um, that we're selecting, which is the orange color, is not global. So even if I were to go back in and make a change to it, so let me go ahead and select the orange and double click on it without um, selecting the shape. And we're going to use, for this particular color, we want 29% magenta. And we want 100% um, yellow. Okay. And if, because I don't have anything selected, preview doesn't really help me. Notice that global is not selected. And I click OK. Nothing changes because that it doesn't change this color that I originally used. But now when I select it and I change the color, it will only change when I um, deliberately edit it or apply the color. But in the case of the global colors, even if they are not selected, if you go in and edit them, they will automatically update those colors. Okay. So I goofed, I think this one at the end is supposed to be the dark green or dark orange. And I think this one now, the purple one is supposed to be a different color. Yeah. So this one is going to be, actually this one I want to be guitar orange. So I'm gonna rename this guitar orange. Okay, and it is non-global. Um, what's the next one that we're going to work with here? So that's a non-global color. Doke. Oh, working with a color picker. Yeah, another way to edit colors again. So this one, which was originally the purple one, um, we're going to use the color picker now to create our burnt orange. The color, the only way that you can access the color picker is by double clicking on the swatch down in the left hand corner of our toolbar. So if I double click on it, it brings up <coughs> color picker. Now before I was in the blues or the violets, but I want to make sure that I'm in the oranges. And again, I have, I can use hue saturation brightness here. I can add RGB colors here. 
if I'm working in the web, you know, for, for web design, I can edit using only web safe col colors, <clears throat> or I can use lab colors in another instance, or I can use CMYK. Well, in this particular instance, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make our burnt orange. And we're going to start by um, using 8% cyan. So that's going to dirty it up a little bit. Um, we're going to use 50% magenta. And we're going to use 100% yellow. And you can see that it is a little kind of, uh, I think that's the right one, 50%. Yeah, 100%, 8 Yeah. I want that eight, um, 50, and 100%. Because as soon as you move this little dot around in here, it changes the percentages. So I do want to add that. And now I have my burnt. And I want to make sure that that's added. And so let's go ahead and add this as a color. And I'll name it burnt orange. And I do want it to be global. Click OK. So now I have a whole selection of colors down here that are really kind of nice. So that's my burnt orange. Um, so there we go. Um, and then we're going to add our own little um, group of colors down here. I mean, I have the option when you select on this little button right here, you can put color groups. And that's what we're going to do in a few minutes is add, create our own color groups. So those are so far uh, a whole bunch of different ways of, of editing and saving colors, global and non-global. Um, the next group of colors that we're going to use for this guitar back here are what are called spot colors. Spot colors um, in the printing industry are known as Pantone colors. Um, it's an additional cost, but it, again, I used the example early on if I wanted to print a green that I would have, and I was using um, CMYK that I would have to print, they would print uh, a blue dot next to a yellow dot. And that was, or mind's eye would mix those colors and it would create green. But if I didn't want any half tone at all, if I wanted to print just a solid color, I would use spot, a spot color and that would be an additional cost. Um, and oftentimes they, with the old Heidelberg presses, they could, they would print um, have could print six colors at a time, and those would be one of the additional two colors that you could print. So to change this color right now, this gray, to um, uh, a nice orange, that's what we're going to use right now. We're going to use a spot color. Okay. Now to find that, we have under this little button right here with the swatches panel, we have library color of, of colors. Well, if we look at color books, you can see that there's a whole bunch of them here. The one that we want right here is the Pantone Solid Uncoated, I believe. I think they want uncoated, right? Or is it coated? Um, hold on here. No, we want coated. So there we go. I want Pantone solid coated. Now, the difference between coated and uncoated, just to let you know, if you're not familiar with the printing process, has to do with the kind of paper that you're using. So if you use a coated paper, then, then what happens is that the ink sits on top of that paper. And you usually get more brilliant, brighter colors. And so, you need to use a specific ink for those types of paper. If you use an uncoated paper, then it tends to be much more porous and it absorbs more of that ink. And you get a darker 
um, less brilliant um, color. So you need, again, if that's the kind of paper you're using and you need to know that advance, then you would select that. And that's something that you need to talk to the printer about. So when I do that, it brings up my color book here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and deselect the colors. But for these Pantone, Pantone solid colors, these are all the whole library of solid inks that you can use. Um, there are color books that you can use so that it's easy, you know, swatch books that are quite expensive still to this day that are over, you know, maybe $150, $130 um, to easily select the colors that you want or, or once you have selected them, then you put in the color that you need. So I want to put in the 137. That's the color that you're using here. And I'm going to select the first one. And notice that it fills the, the guitar shape that I had selected with that color. Now, it may look very similar to the CMYK, but it is not. It's a different process. And until you experience working with a printer and dealing with spot colors and working with um, um, regular you know, colors, just CMYK, then it, it's, it's, it's unique. It's a very different process. What I can also do now is that now that I've added that, is that if you look in here, you'll notice that the Pantone color has been added and it's slightly different than the global colors. It looks very similar, but there's a little dot in the lower right hand corner. Global colors have a little check mark and a little um, notch in the lower right hand corner, a white notch that distinguishes them from the non-global non colors. The spot colors, on the other hand, have a little dot in the lower right hand corner. So now, if I close this, and with this color, this Pantone color selected, if I want to select a tint of that, then that's what I can do. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a tint of that, and it's just simply, you can go from zero to 100%. And I want this to be 70%. Um, so uh, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this one and this one. Um, but let me go ahead. Uh, no, I didn't want to do that. I want to make sure that that color is selected. Now I'm going to go ahead and create 70% right here. Uh, it's easier to type it in sometimes. There we go. And now with that selected, I can um, go ahead and click. Uh, I goofed on my apologies. Let me go ahead and select this again. Let's make sure that this is 70%. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add this to my, um, there, whoop, I didn't want to change that. Let's bring that back. There we go. Now with it deselected, I'll change it to 70%. Okay. Now I'll come back to my color picker uh, or my um, swatch panel and I'll go ahead and I'll add that. So here's my tint. And now I can select these shapes. Now that it's been added to my library, and I can add that tint. Okie doke. Now, let's say um, you talk to your printer and you decide, I just can't afford the spot colors. But you use the Pantone colors, the spot colors as a guide because they were really important to you. They were important to the client, but you don't have the budget for them. So what you can do is you can convert these colors to um, CMYK. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to say Command A, select all, and I've selected all of the colors. So no matter where in my illustration, if I have spot colors, I can now go to Edit, and I can go down to um, uh, Edit Colors, 
and I can select convert to CMYK. And it will give a close approximation. Um, again, there are also color books that have both um, the CMYK with the Pandone colors um, adjacent to them. So you can see how close of approximation that those colors will be. Now I'll switch to that. And now when I select it and I go back, um, I still have my Pantone colors here, but when I go back and I look at the color call out, notice that it's not a Pantone color or a tint anymore. It gives me the CMYK color call outs and likewise for this. Okay. So that's working with spot colors, which are also known as Pantone colors. <clears throat> And it's um, giving you the option later on if you need to um, convert it to CMYK, convert those colors to CMYK. And again, that's usually a budget issue. Um, I think this has to be a color too. What do they want this to be? I guess this is going to be a tint as well. So I'm going to go ahead and here's another way of doing that. You change the color of this if you want. Um, for example, I can go ahead with the eyedropper and the eyedropper tool picks up all the properties, the fill and the stroke. So if I click here, notice it automatically switched in here. Let me deselect, let me click another one here. There we go, I click there and it's that one. If I click here, it's the gray. Well, I want it to be this one and then what I want this to fill this this color. If I hold down the option or alt key and I click, it squirts out the um, properties that you had picked up with the eyedropper here. Let me do that again. So again, if I click here, it will fill the eyedropper with the attributes, the fill and the stroke of the shape here. And it's just a fill, no stroke. Then if I want to apply that color or those attributes, those properties to a particular um, shape, then I move the eyedropper over the shape that I want to apply it to and I hold down the option or alt key and notice how the little cursor, the little icon changes. And rather than picking up the color, it's going to squirt it out now. And I click there and it squirts it out. So that's another nifty little treat. And not only does that eyedropper pick up um, attributes of colors, but when you, we get to start working with type, that can be very effective too, a way of um, changing the properties of the type choices that you've made on very quickly on the fly. Not only type, the, the font, um, but the size and any other attributes that you've applied to that. Okie doke. Um, another thing that we can do with color. And now we're going to move on to the little cassette. And what we want to do is we're going to use what is called a color guide. So I'm going to close this. And our color guide is this. Um, it, I don't know how many of you have had a color theory class, but um, if you have, this is color theory um, um, in a all rolled into one you know, from an entire semester, you know, at your fingertips now to work with um, complementary colors, to work with, um, um, you know, split complements, you name it, any, anything that you want to, to do, you can work with this. So what I want to do is I'm going to select the entire little cassette here, like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to come there. What I'm going to do is I need to use the color panel. Um, I've forgotten where I need to go. Uh, 
let me go ahead here. I've forgotten where I need to go. Because I need to pick up those colors. No, I'm, I misspoke. Um, I just need to pick this color here. I need to pick the green. And this is going to be our base green here. Okay, this is our base color. Um, we select all the colors later on for a different approach to this. So I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. So what I want to do now is I want to click on this little button right here. And I want to select analogous colors to this, to this base color. And that's not what I wanted. I want this color. There we go. So by clicking on that color, it selects analogous colors to that. That's what I wanted. So let me undo that. Let's go back. Let's go back again. I guess I can't. There we go. We go back again. So I select this color. It puts it in my base color. And when I click here, and with analogous colors selected, notice that analogous colors are colors on the color wheel that are adjacent to this. And we have another group of analogous colors. If you want monochromatic colors, if you want shades of those colors, if you want a triad, if you want compound colors, if you want high contrast, on and on and on. Complementary colors, split complements, you name it. In this particular instance, we want the analogous colors. And so now it takes and it automatically creates a, a group of, of, of colors for us that are harmonious, that are analogous colors to this key color right here. Now what I can do is I can go ahead down here and I can save the colors as a, a swatch group. And that's what we want to do. We want to create this as a swatch group. So when I click that, and I go back to my swatches, you'll notice that that's been added as a brand new swatch group. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, very nice way if you know if you're unfamiliar with with working with colors of um, of creating a, a really nice group. So the next thing that we want to do now is we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring up the um, this again. This time I'm going to select this color is my main color. No, nope, I didn't want to do that. Let's go back. I want to click this color is my main color. Uh, I can't, if I click to, there we go. I want to select this color is my main color. But now instead of analogous colors, I want to select um, from our harmony rules. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select, which was it? They wanted, um, I think they wanted complementary to. Um, right here, do they want complementary to? I think so. No, I'm going in the wrong direction here. It's this one that we, that we want from here. And we're going to take this color and we're going to take it and we're going to use complementary too. Yeah, I told you it starts to get really complicated in here, different ways of creating um, that it? Those don't look right. It's not right. And I want to make sure that this is right. So I'm going to go back again. I want to make sure that I have uh, analogous selected. I'm going to go back all the way again. 
And I'm going to select this color and start over again. Yeah, I'm going to make sure that I have analogous selected. There we go. And then I'm going to make sure that I have this color selected so that that's in our main color right here, the main color. And now I can come back and maybe I selected the wrong group. I want color group. What did I want? Complementary two. Yeah, that was right. Complementary two. So I want, instead of analogous, I want complementary two. There we go. Okay. So I have those. The colors don't look right though. Um, so maybe we're going to go ahead and we're going to edit some specific colors in this group now. And that's the, the idea with that. So these look a little bit different. I'm going to stop recording for a minute because I'm not getting the colors that I'm supposed to have here. So let me unpause my recording. recording. So for whatever reason, the color that I have here in my analogous colors is a little bit different than what they have. Because as soon as I switch and I go from there to say, okay, I want that color to now be a complement to, this is coming out to be a little bit different than what theirs is. Okay. And <clears throat> that's okay, but what they want us to do next is to, to go ahead in here and we're going to edit these colors in a very different way. So by adding that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add that to our um, color is another color group. And if you want, you can take a whole group of colors and we can edit them. And to do that, um, I'll, I'll start this a little bit, but we're going to have to finish up tomorrow, is that we use this little button right here. So we edit the color group from here. It looks like a little um, color wheel down here. And we click on that and it brings this up. Okay. And I don't want to, um, to edit that way. I want to, let's go to assign. No. Nope. And how about if I use this one here? Um, let me make sure that this is selected. Um, I'm having a hard time today with this part. I got to make sure that I go back. I don't want that. I want, because we'll get to this in a little bit. Um, I'm having a hard time here. Let me um, look at the properties panel. And with this color group selected, um, yeah, I would normally select right here but why isn't it going to where I need it to be? I'm gonna, to avoid further goofs here, I'm gonna go ahead and select um, this color group. Okay. Um, and I don't wanna save changes yet. So let me, oh, I see, we select from there. There we go. I forgot, I had this selected the other day, the little color bars. Um, anyway, now I have this group of colors selected and you can see that this is the key color that is selected. I can go ahead and right now, if I move these around, notice how they're all linked to one another. Well, I can do that and I can also, I can make them a little bit brighter by pulling that out. I can also make them a little bit more intense by changing this a little bit. And then I can unlink them and I can select a single color and I can edit it. 
And that's what we'll be doing next tomorrow. And we'll finish all of this up. I told you that's a fairly extensive lesson. And there's all kinds of little buttons here, there, and everywhere that um, are easy to forget. And it, because it is color, I want to make sure that all of these colors are accurate. So I'm going to go back after I'm done recording today. I'm going to make sure that the colors that we have for mine are accurate. And they aren't for the cassette right now, so that um, it matches the, the lesson. And then we'll go back and we'll edit our color group from that. And then we'll create further color groups from what we've created up here for our guitar colors and do a variety of things in here. We're going to also use um, tomorrow, there's another feature that's underneath uh, the, let me cancel this, um, underneath the shape builder tool and it's live paint. And um, that can be kind of interesting to work with sometimes. So it's another way of editing and, and changing colors. Uh, as I said, it, it gets really, really complicated. Um, and it's a very robust way to work. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and call it quits for today. I'm going to fix this cassette colors. And we'll come back and finish that. And then we'll finish up the lesson tomorrow. And then if we have time, I will begin um, talking about the next assignment, the Doki Doki assignment, to get some ideas for skateboard decks and that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause my recording. Um, and then we're going to, um, I'm going to take questions for, from you to see if there's any, if you have any questions and that will be it for today.